Hey guys, throughout World of Warcraft's near 14 year run so far, there have been mounts that have come and gone. They used to be obtainable either through old dungeons, quests, raids, or even Game Master mistakes. I thought it would be interesting to give you an exhaustive list of all of these mounts, how they used to be obtained, and why they're no longer available. Mainly for entertainment, but who knows, maybe it'll be useful for all of you mount collectors out there. I will cheat for a couple of these. Four of the ones I'll be covering are actually still very rarely obtainable on the black market auction house, even though their original source was removed. I want to include them though, because they're still interesting I think, so I'll mention them as I get to them. I guess the best way to do this is to start from the base game and work our way up to the latest expansion. First up, we have all of the old epic racial mounts. Up until patch 1.4, the old epic 100% speed mounts in the game looked very similar to their rare 60% speed counterparts. Just different palette swaps pretty much. In this patch, Blizzard made them a bit more epic to match their extreme price by adding some armor onto them. At the same time, these original epic mounts were removed from the vendors and a quest was added to trade them in for the new armored ones in case you already bought it before the patch. This was of course before the mount collection tab where the mounts were actual items that you could use. It was extremely difficult to afford these back then and combined with that turn in, very few survived today, making them some of the rarest mounts in the game. We have the black and frost rams for the dwarves, the icy blue and white mechano striders for the gnomes, the palomino and white stallion for the humans, the Ancient Frost Saber and Black Night Saber for the Night Elves, the Red and Winter Wolves for the Orcs, Green and Teal Kodos for the Torrens, and lastly, the Ivory and Mottled Red Raptors for the Trolls. And next, we have the old Zilgarub mounts. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these very rarely pop up on the Black Market Auction House, but their original source is now gone, making them almost impossible to get unless you have a lot of patience and gold. As you may know, Zulgarub used to be an actual raid before the Cataclysm expansion. There were two bosses in here that dropped these mounts, but ever since the remake in patch 4.1, you can no longer get them from here. We have the Swift Zillian Tiger from the High Priest Thikal boss, and the Swift Rizashi Raptor from the Bloodlord Mandokir. These were pretty groundbreaking at the time, because it was one of the only times that you could use a cross-faction mount. Back then, for the most part, everyone just used their racial mounts, so seeing a horde on a tiger or an alliance on a raptor was a big deal. The new ZG also has mount drops, but these are also reworks, so these originals are extremely rare to see these days. Something that isn't obtainable off the BMAH though is the Black Kiraji Battle Tank. I won't go super in depth here since I already covered it in a video, but basically in classic World of Warcraft, before you could zone into the Ankiraj raid, you had to complete something called the Ankiraj War Effort. Both factions had to collect a bunch of trade goods, and a huge quest line also opened up called the Scepter of the Shifting Sands. It was extremely long and difficult to complete, requiring many raids, both indoors and outdoors, and whoever completed it within 10 hours of the first person got a special title called the Scarab Lord and this legendary mount. You may recognize it as a recolor of those AQ-40 mounts. This one is usable outdoors however, and it's the only legendary mount even to this day, not counting GM items. It had some special quirks too. You used to be able to summon it while falling, and you could also buffer it and start summoning it when you're about to exit combat. If you left combat before you finished the cast, you would still summon, which was pretty unique. And as a bonus, in patch 7.3.5, anyone who had this mount also got an updated version called the Black Kiraji War Tank for free. They still kept the original of course, but if they wanted a higher res version, they had the option. So, both of these are extremely rare, just like everything in this list, but it's not the rarest. 
the most rare mount wasn't received from a raid, nor an epic quest chain, or anything like that. It was received through an error of a game master, and that's the fluorescent green Mechano Strider. There are a few mounts in the game that have never actually been implemented in any way. They're mostly just recolors of other mounts. One day though, a gnome mage player was having an issue with a mount that he just bought, and he ended up deleting it and made a ticket to a GM to get it replaced with a new one. But, by mistake, the GM sent the player this mount instead, making him the only person in the whole game in every server in every region to have it. However, during the Draenor expansion, he tried to sell his account and thus the mount, and the auction reportedly reached over $15,000 until Blizzard caught wind of it and removed the mount from his journal. Next, we have an event mount, and that's the Brewfest Ram. The Brewfest event has gone over some changes over the years. You used to be able to obtain this only during the 2007 Brewfest event. You collected prize tickets by doing various objectives, and if you got 600, you could get a quest starter that either gave you the normal Brewfest RAM or the Swift version of it. You can still get the Swift version and also a Kodo, but for reasons unknown, the blue version was removed for the next year's event, making it quite rare to see these days. Kind of funny that the inferior version is actually more rare. And also during the Burning Crusade days, we have the original Amani Warbear from Zul Aman. Similar to Zulgarub, this raid was repackaged into a dungeon, so this mount was lost in the process. You got it if you completed a timed challenge of killing bosses and freeing prisoners, and if you were fast enough, it would drop from a bag after the Lynx boss. They re-released it as the Amani Battle Bear, which is a purplish recolor. And speaking of bears, the Big Blizzard Bear is another unobtainable mount. This was given to attendees of BlizzCon 2008 in the form of a code, and if you couldn't make the trip, you could also get it as part of a direct TV subscription. So, one of the two bear mounts at the time, and it was also the first one to be bound to your account so you could pass it between characters. If you're willing to break the terms of service and part with $1500, you can find them on eBay. Otherwise, it's no longer obtainable though. Next, we have all of the Gladiator mounts. Players who obtain the Gladiator title in Rated PvP are always awarded with a special mount for that season only. I won't list every mount since there's quite a lot and they're very similar to each other. They're all armored versions of other mounts and they followed a theme with each expansion. The Burning Crusade had armored nether drakes, Wrath had frost worms, Cataclysm had twilight drakes, Pandaria had Cloud Serpents, Draenor Gronlings, Legion Storm Dragons, and BFA will have Armored Proto Drakes. To date, there are 25 of these total that are unobtainable. Earlier, we talked about the GM mistake with the Mechano Strider. Well, how about a GM only mount? Peep's Whistle is the other legendary mount in the game, first data mined back in 2007 during the Burning Crusade. It's of course not obtainable by players, and only lootable through GM commands. The model is the same as the Ashes of Alar, which is still obtainable, and found in the Tempest Keep raid off of Kel'Thas Sunstrider. The only difference is the rarity and the flavor text, which refers to Alex Afrasiabi, who's the lead world designer for World of Warcraft. Moving on to Wrath mounts here, next up we have the Plagued and Black Proto Drakes. The Wrath of the Lich King was the first expansion to have achievements. Among these were the Glory of achievements, where players have to complete special challenges in each raid instance. There are two for the Max Ramus raid, titled Glory of the Raider for each size, 10 player and 25 player. These two mounts were rewards for completing these achievements. The Plagued for the 10 player version, and the Black for 25 man. The achievements are still in the game, but in patch 3.1 with the release of Ulduar, the mounts were removed as rewards. 
they did this because they wanted to keep them special, so with the next tier coming out, it would be too easy to get. Although, Aldor itself had the same meta achievements with mounts as well, and those are still obtainable today, so there is some inconsistency. Speaking of which, the Plagued Proto-Drake can rarely be found on the BMAH, but not the black one. Why? No one knows. So, not the rarest mounts out of this list, but still pretty darn rare since they were only available for that one patch. They aren't the only unobtainable Wrath mounts though. One of the toughest mounts to obtain was the Tribute to Immortality Horses. This was an achievement that required you to clear through the entirety of the Trial of the Crusader Raid on heroic difficulty without anyone dying. Each faction got a special mount, the Horde got the Crusader's Black War Horse, and the Alliance got the White One. It was retired in the Cataclysm pre-patch, so it was still obtainable through ICC and the Ruby Sanctum, but still a very tough achievement to complete, and it's quite rare to see one out in the wild. And to follow the scheme with the other Wrath mounts, there were also 10 player counterparts for the same achievement. The Alliance got the Swift Alliance Steed, and the Horde got the Swift Horde Wolf. Next, we have a couple of promotional mounts, and that's the Spectral Griffin and the Spectral Windrider. There was an old system called the Scroll of Resurrection that lets you sort of recruit old friends that dropped the game. If they hadn't been subscribed in three months, you could send them an email and give them some free playtime, and if they ended up resubscribing, you would get these mounts as a reward. If you were Alliance, you got the Griffin, and if you're a Horde, you got the Windrider. However, the whole thing was retired during the Warlords of Draenor expansion, so by extension, so too were these mounts. Another promotional mount was Tyriel's Charger. Blizzard's action RPG game, Diablo 3, was about to be released, and the World of Warcraft celebrated it with a promotion. If you bought a full year of game time, you got the Diablo 3 game and this mount as a bonus. Just a few months later, the promotion ended, and you haven't been able to get it ever since, except for an error in late 2017 where it was accidentally made available for purchase in the cash shop. It was only meant to be sold on the Taiwanese and Korean versions of the game since they never had the promotion, but through some glitch, the US and EU servers were able to buy it for a short time. Next up, we have the Korkron Warwolf from Pandaria. This was the start of the end of expansion ritual, where if you kill the final boss before the next expansion's pre-patch, you get a mount. This was awarded to players who killed Garrosh Hellscream in the Siege of Orgrimmar raid on normal difficulty or higher before the Warlords of Draenor 6.0 pre-patch. Not the rarest mount, as there was a big stat squish at this time, and normal was pretty trivial to complete, but still, kind of rare to see these days since it was so long ago. Next up, we have the Brawler's Burly Mushan Beast. One of the new activities introduced in the Mists of Pandari expansion was the Brawler's Guild, where you can spectate and participate in arena-style matches against unique NPCs. The more matches you win, the higher you rank up, and this mount was a reward for going all the way to the max, which was rank 8. It temporarily became no longer obtainable after Season 1 had concluded, but it saw a return for Season 2 during the Warlords of Draenor expansion. This led people to believe that it would return every season, but in Season 3 during Legion, it was replaced with the Brawler's Burly Basilisk instead. This was also awarded to players who reached rank 8 during that season, and it too is now unobtainable ever since Season 3's conclusion in Patch 8.0. And lastly for Pandaria, we have the Phoenix Mounts. This expansion also introduced the Challenge Mode Dungeons, which was basically an early form of Mythic Plus. You raced through these dungeons, and if you completed all of them in a certain time, you got some special transmog armor and a mount. These mounts were awarded for receiving a silver medal in each of the dungeons, so not super tough to get, but still not easy. If you completed this achievement, you got an egg, which you could then trade in for any one of the four different colored mounts. 
This would be repeated once more in the Warlords of Draenor expansion. Same deal here, if you got a silver in every dungeon, you got a mount, although this time it was just one, and that's the Challenger's War Yeti. All of these challenge dungeon mounts became unobtainable when the pre-patch for the next expansion launched. Next up in Draenor, we have the Warlord's Death Whale. This one was pretty interesting because it was part of another promotion. The American Choppers reality show did a mini web series for World of Warcraft where they built Horde and Alliance themed choppers. Fans voted on which one looked better, and the players of the winning faction would receive a special in-game copy of it as a mount if they logged in before September 30th, 2014. The Horde ended up winning, so they all got their chopper for free. The Alliance still had access to their mount, the Champion's Dreadblade, but they had to pay a small fortune in gold, and they could still buy it even today. Kind of interesting that the winning chopper is no longer obtainable, but the losing one still is. So, for the Alliance players who missed out, it's actually advantageous that their side lost. One way or another, the Alliance always wins. And another Draenor one is the Corehound. Actually, still technically obtainable through the black market, but the original way that you got this was through the 10th anniversary event. Blizzard celebrated 10 years by temporarily re-releasing their first big raid, the Molten Core, as a level 100 LFR raid. If you finished the entire thing and you killed Ragnaros, you got a feat of strength and this mount as rewards. It was pretty rough at the time as I recall because it was a little overtuned for LFR standards, so there were lots of wipes, especially on the Baron Geddon fight with his bombs, but it was worth it to finish it at least once for the mount. And lastly for Draenor, we have the Grove Warden, commonly known as the Moose Mount. In similar fashion to Garrosh and his wolf, you got this if you defeated the final boss of the Warlords of Draenor expansion, Archimond, before the next expansion's pre-patch. This time though, they bumped it up to heroic difficulty or higher, making it a bit tougher to obtain. Another promotional mount was released during Legion called the Primal Flamesaber. This time, it was tied to the Blizzard MOBA game, The Heroes of the Storm. In 2017, from the 14th of February to the 26th of March, if you played just 15 matches with a friend, you got this mount as a reward. Ground only, as you can see, but still pretty neat. And lastly for Legion, we have the Violet Spellwing. Just like the previous expansions, this was a reward for defeating the final boss before the next expansion's pre-patch. This time it was Argus the Unmaker on heroic difficulty or higher before patch 8.0. And just for the sake of this video not becoming outdated in one week, we also have the War of Thorns mounts. There's a pre-launch event going on with the Battle for Azeroth where the Alliance and Horde are engaged in warfare. Trying not to spoil anything, if you complete the chain through the Darnassus portion, you get the Teldrassil Hippogriff if you're Alliance, and the Undercity Plague Bad if you're Horde. Supposedly, these are only available up until the release of BFA, at which point they'll join the rest of these mounts in the unobtainable category. So, that's it. For all of the ones that were in-game at least, there do exist some that have been data mined over the years, but they never made it to the actual game for one reason or another. I won't cover all of these because this video would be two hours long, and they're not really super interesting anyways. For the most part, they're just recolors of existing mounts. I guess an interesting one though is the Tiger Mount, which has sort of cemented itself into World of Warcraft urban legend and mythology. Ever since Vanilla, this has been rumored to be obtainable from a secret spawning vendor in the world. This was fueled by the discovery of a normally unreachable secret cave in the Stranglethorn Vale Zone called the Tiger Cave. You had to do some tricky wall jumps to reach this spot, and because it's so hidden, people sort of tied it to this mount. However, it still hasn't seen the light of day 14 years later. There's also the Brewfest Kodo, clearly intended to be the Horde counterpart of the Brewfest Ram, but for some reason, never implemented. And the last one I'll mention is the Leopard Mount. 
Kind of similar in lore to the Tiger Mound, except without the cave. This did actually see an appearance in the old alpha servers though, as evidenced by the screenshot. It just never made it in-game for some reason. But that's about it, I guess. Those are all of the unobtainable mounts that I know of, as of patch 8.0 that is. If I missed any, feel free to let me know. Like the video if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.